Holy greetings dear brothers and sisters and God bless you. This is Scott Bradley coming to you again. I feel impressed to make another presentation here concerning the days and times that we're living in and the attitudes that have gripped the 21st century church. Let me say this from the onset. This is a day and time now where we need to get right with God like never before. Because I'm thoroughly convinced that we are living in the last days, in fact, the last hours. I believe that the rapture of the church is soon to take place. And that the signs, the political signs, the, the signs and the movement of the nations and leadership of the world is pointing us to all-out world war, which the Bible describes as great tribulation. And I honestly believe that the church is going to be raptured out before that particular time. I do not believe that the Christians, the church, uh, is going to have to suffer through the tribulation in its fullest uh, uh, strength. I believe that the Lord is coming, and I believe it's soon to return. And I believe if ever there was a time when the people of God need to get themselves together and get right with God and look forward to His coming, this is that time. Uh, one of the things I'm noticing, and the Bible even told us this, is that in the latter days there will be a great falling away. And one of the things that I'm witnessing with my own eyes, and anybody that has any spirituality can witness it as well, that the church world, the, 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 the uh, mindset of many people that have been raised in Christianity are slowly but surely turning away and compromising their faith and their confidence in the Bible. I am thoroughly convinced that the Bible is the infallible word of God and that there's no other word beside the Bible. I don't care if it's the Quran, the teachings of Buddha, uh, Eckhart Tolle's uh, recent books on, on pantheism and all the other things that have come out with uh, Joseph Smith and all those others. Uh, the Bible is the only and infallible word of God. The Bible is accurate. The Bible uh, has not faded with time. And what I find interesting is that many books uh, that were written for times and eras uh, are no longer relevant as the time progresses. Uh, they may speak for a particular era. They may speak for a particular time. They may speak for attitudes of people uh, during a particular movement that was happening in the earth or in the world or in the nation or wherever they were at that particular time. But as the time faded, as the era faded, so also is the significance of the writing. But isn't it interesting to note that the Bible remains current, the Bible remains right, the Bible has not changed because the Bible is the only and infallible Word of God. Uh, again, I listen to people now, and here's one of the dangers, brothers and sisters, sisters that I'm noticing uh, in this 21st century, and that is because we don't know the Word, because we don't know the Bible, it becomes very easy for us to be caught up and taken away off into something else because we really don't know what we are supposed to believe as people of God. We really don't know what Jesus said. And what I'm finding in many cases is sometimes people get the wrong information and run in the wrong direction and make statements that are not true, that have no foundation whatsoever, and yet people believe it and run after it and even make foundational teachings out of it when it's founded upon a lie. Uh, many things that I hear people say, uh, even with, of course, the, ex the expansion of social media now with Facebook and, and other variables. And I'm looking at the attitudes of people and what they have to say about certain issues, uh, even with YouTube and certain things that are placed on YouTube. And then I look at the comments on what people say. And it's interesting to, to me that, that some of the things that people say, they have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea. They just assume something or heard something and then make a statement about it, and not realizing that the statement that they heard or the, the source is not reliable. One of the ones is the Bible contradicts itself. Uh, again, I've heard people say that for years. I've heard people take that, uh, well, Reverend, it's common knowledge, the Bible contradicts itself. I've not found in my study of the Scripture down through the decades one single contradiction. And even those things that appear to be contradictions uh, is simply because people have not known understand the origin uh, of the word itself. Uh, when something is translated into the English, uh, it, it doesn't always translate. In many cases, it only translates one word in English, but has multiple meanings in the original Greek and the Hebrew. And I'll give you an example of this. The Bible says, let no man say that he is tempted, for, uh, tempted, he's tempted of God, for God cannot tempt any man with evil. And yet, when you read in the book of Genesis, the Bible said the Lord tempted Abraham. Somebody said, well, Reverend, that's a contradiction. But you must understand the origin of those words. Those words, tempting or temptation, do not mean the same thing. In one case, it means to test. In another case, it means to lead into evil. God cannot lead people into evil. And that's what the scripture says when it says, let no man say that when I'm tempted, I'm tempted of God. It's talking about leading into evil. But then there is the temptation or the testing that God did to Abraham. It was a test. And oftentimes God will test us. Another one I hear is when Jesus said to Peter three times, Son of uh, Simon, uh, uh, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? 
Uh, and he asked three times. I've even heard preachers say that he had to ask him three times because uh, Peter wasn't sure. Well, that's not true. That, uh, that was actually in the original Greek, three different questions. There were three uh, uh, variants of words uh, in the original Greek to describe love. They're only translated into the English as love. So in fact, when he said, uh, Simon, uh, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? And he said it three times. He actually asked him three different questions that only translated into one question from the Greek into the English. Uh, and about other variable, other variable things that, that people say, uh, you know, uh, people try to say that uh, all of the religions were the same. Uh, they just divided. You know, that's not true. That's not even true. That's not even remotely true. Uh, we all worship the same God. We just call him different names. That's not true. Uh, the Bible was written by men who sat down and picked and chose what they wanted to. Uh, that's not true. The Bible was written by the white man. That's not true. All of those things are not even true. They're false. But people get that information and they run in the wrong direction. And oftentimes say people have the wrong information running in the wrong direction. But the Bible says this. Ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And whom the son set free is free indeed. Now, what does that say? Know the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, when you're talking about truth, and Jesus says, I am the truth, he is not just someone telling the truth. He is truth incarnated. He is truth embodied. You cannot have truth without having Jesus. He's not just telling you the truth. He is truth. And no man comes to the Father except by Jesus Christ. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to say that we must draw closer to Jesus. We must get to know Jesus. <laughs> Pardon me. It is not about religion. I emphasize that again. It is not about religion. Well, you choose to be Christian. I choose to be Buddhist. I choose to be Muslim. You know, the question is not even going to be asked on Judgment Day what religion you were. Uh, the source and foundation of many of these religions is founded by false teachers and false prophets in the first place. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Jesus Christ is the only hope of mankind. And following Jesus is what's going to allow us to live eternally with him. Jesus didn't come to start a religion. He came to establish the church. And the foundation of the church is the revelation that Peter received from God, that Jesus is the Christ. And Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to thee, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock, who was the rock? The rock was not Peter. The rock was the revelation that Peter received from God. On this rock that Jesus is the Christ, I will build my church. Not start another religion. Build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I'm going to wrap this up, but I want to say that I'm very excited because within the next couple of months, our new book is going to be released. In fact, we're in a stage of final edit right now with our publisher, and I anticipate within the next two months, the book, The Challenges of the 21st Century Church, is going to be released. You're going to hear more information on my website. You're going to hear information on, on my Facebook page. Uh, as we're leading up to that time, I honestly believe that this book is going to catapult uh, even ministry to another level. Uh, I believe that many people are going to read this and be blessed, and I pray that many would be informed and turn their hearts to Jesus Christ because I'm not out trying to be popular myself. I'm trying to turn you to the cross. I'm trying to turn you to the only hope of mankind. I'm not trying to be a famous celebrity, a famous preacher, a famous name because I'm nobody. I'm nothing. I'm flawed. I'm, 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 oh my God, I'm not perfect and I'm not trying to push that. I'm an individual that needs people to pray for me. Amen. But I am pointing you to the cross as a minister of the gospel, as an ambassador of the kingdom of God, I am pointing you to the cross, the only hope of mankind, to the cross, the only redemption of mankind, to the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not religion, not philosophy, not being a good person. You know, that's another myth that people think if you be good, if you're good, I weigh your bad, you go to heaven. That's not true. You know why? Because we're never good enough to go to heaven. It's by the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross that provides healing and salvation for all of mankind that would come to the cross. And therefore, I must point you to the cross. Jesus Christ, our only hope. Jesus Christ, our only salvation. Jesus Christ, our only redemption. I'll say this too, uh, as I look at our world leaders today and events that are about to take place and 
oh my God, the rattling of the sabers and, and uh, the threats made back and forth even by our American president, uh, by the North Korean president, by the Russian president, by Syria, and all of the instability, even the minds. My God, I'm looking how unstable minds of our leaders are. They, they, a lot of times, it doesn't appear to me they're even using common sense. They're just threatening one another. Well, you know, this could escalate and lead us into world war. Uh, even with the use of nuclear weapons, this is a scary time. This is a time when we need to be assured our walk in Jesus Christ because heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand forever. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I, I continue to pray, and I want you to continue to pray, and I want you to draw nearer to Jesus Christ. Till next time, this is Scott Bradley saying, visit our website, please, scottbradleyministries.vp. That's V as in Victor, P as in Paul, vpweb.com. Uh, let us know, leave your comments, let us know if you're being blessed by the information that we're putting forth. As I said before, we're looking forward to our new book coming out within the next couple of months. And I believe that the Lord is going to inform, inspire, and bless you. Turn to the cross, Jesus Christ, the only hope of mankind. God bless.